I recently talked about stellar parallax as a way to measure distances in astronomy. To recap, distances are important to know as they are required to form a picture of our universe, the objects within it, and to map out what's going on around us. For example, how the Milky Way looks, how far it is to nearby stars, how the distances between planets in our solar system vary, the distances as well between stars in a galaxy, and more general things like the scale of the universe, how stars are grouped together into galaxies and clusters of galaxies and clusters of clusters, and how that all looks. When I talked about parallax, I mentioned its major problem. While it's an incredibly good method, it's also very short range, measuring to of order a few hundred parsecs away. The Milky Way is just over 100,000 light years across. It's an ellipse, so slightly less in some places, more in others. That's still massively larger than the distance we can observe with parallax, which means we need some different methods to get further out. We're only viewing very close to us with that method. One way to do this is to use what are called standard candles. This is a term coined by the astronomer Henrietta Swan-Levitt, who first discovered what's called the period luminosity relation of Cepheid variables, which is an incredibly important example of a standard candle. This was the early work into this area of research. So let's explain how the idea of a standard candle would work. Start with a star or some object in space that emits light. In physics we can mathematicize this as its luminosity, or if you want absolute magnitude, because an object emitting light is emitting energy and we can work from that to a sensible number. This is a property of the object itself. The light then passes through space and is observed by us. We describe the magnitude we see of the object as its apparent magnitude. This is different to the absolute magnitude because not all the light emitted from the object reaches us. Obviously, if you consider light emitted uniformly around a spherical object, the concentration of light emitted from that object in one small space spreads as that light travels through space and a lot less hits us. The important fact is for this example, the spherical object emitting light, we can tell the relationship between luminosity and the apparent brightness that we see it's a known function of distance called an inverse square law. So the amount of light that we see is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between us and the object. If we write this in terms of magnitudes, with M as apparent magnitude, capital M as absolute magnitude, and D as distance, we can derive the following formula. This brings us to standard candles. How do we do this? Well, if we have an object where we know what that absolute magnitude should be because of the physics of the object, then we can calculate the distance to them as apparent magnitude is what we can measure. Obviously, for a lot of objects, we can see them, we can measure the apparent magnitude, but we've got no idea what the absolute magnitude is. But for some objects, because of the physics of them, they will have a very stable and hopefully known absolute magnitude. To use the example of Cepheid variables, which I mentioned earlier, they're a type of star that pulsates radially outwards, varying in temperature and also their diameter. This produces changes in brightness, but they also have a well-defined period of that change. What Swan Levitt discovered was that there is a direct relationship between the luminosity of the stars and the pulsation period. So you can know the true luminosity of one of these stars from that observation. From that you can get the absolute magnitude, because that's essentially the same thing in a different unit scale. You use that and the apparent magnitude, plug it into the formula, you've found your distance to the object. This is not easy, it has its problems. With Cepheids, we can verify the distance using other methods for those that are nearby but we do need to trust that the physical law holds for those further away. And this may not be the case, since those formed nearby may have formed in a particular part of the galaxy, and may have different structures 
for example, metal content than those further away. And this did in fact happen in the past. We have to check and recheck our measurements to make sure that our standard candles are actually a standard. The advantage though, is that distances can be measured that are far further than we can get to with parallax. We're limited by the ability of our telescope in how far we can see, but we can go a lot further due to the parameters we're looking for. For example, one type of idea for a standard candle is using type 1a supernova and measuring their light curve, which is a lot easier to do than the tiny angles between the stars, which gives us a far greater distance we can see to. So that's what a standard candle is then and roughly why it works. Hopefully you now understand how they used to calculate distances, and hopefully you found this of some enjoyment. I've been Mike, goodbye.